I'm gonna keep this fast, short, and simple. I'm gonna be graduating, and in celebration of me graduating, I'm gonna be talking about my five favorite kids in gaming, mostly because I'm no longer gonna be a kid anymore, because I'm gonna be graduating. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Read the description. There's gonna be some spoilers in four, three, and one. So keep in mind about that. And overall, this is my favorite list of my favorite five kids. I mean, there's a bunch of kids that have been gone through. And I wish there was more, and I wish I had more time to talk about these kids, but what are you gonna do? Time to trade. I gotta go graduate, I gotta go. Cute intro, me with shut your mouth. What did I do? You heard it here guys, we're doing a top 5 kids in gaming list. Now there's going to be a couple rules for this list. For starters, no kids over the age of 18, which means you got to be 18 or under to qualify for this list, because you know, we don't want adults in this list. They're icky, they're disgusting, they're ugh. Rule number 2, one kid per franchise, because we don't want like a huge list of like Kingdom Hearts characters just being kids in this list, because that's going to be extremely boring and stupid. And on this list, we're just going over what I like about these kids, whether if they're just so cool to look at, or maybe they have amazing abilities, or maybe they just overcame something amazing. Nonetheless, I don't want this list to be kind of stupid, so I'm going to remove characters that seem to age in rapid or dramatic rates compared to other people, so sorry Pit. And remember, even though this may be my list of my favorite kids in gaming, that doesn't mean my opinion is better than yours. So if you have your own opinion or idea, you can put it on the comment section below, or even better, you should make a video about it, just to prove me wrong. With all that out of the way, I hope you enjoy. That being said, let's get started with this list already. Trainer Red from Pokemon. Now this kid is pretty amazing. At the age of 10, he got his first Pokemon and he went around the world of Pokemon all by himself at the age of 10. What he did basically, his goal was to capture all 151 Pokemon, challenge all 8 gym leaders and succeed in beating them, go to the Elite Four, beat them, challenge the champion and become the champion of Kanto and possibly Johto. That's pretty amazing for a 10 year old. That's just crazy. And along his journey, he went through so many obstacles, beat an entire organization of evil Team Rocket and he had a deal with his annoying rival Blue which is like that one kid that just won't stay out of your face. That's just a big accomplishment. He captured legendary Pokemons too from your Articuno, Zapdos, Moltres to Mew and Mewtwo itself. He completed the entire Pokedex. Yeah sure he may be quiet and really we know nothing about Red. We don't know what happened to him after Gold but he's a cool character nonetheless. I mean I wish I was him capturing all those Pokemon on an amazing journey. Who wouldn't? Young Link from Majora's Mask and Ocarina of Time. Now this kid has done a lot for being a child. He traveled through time, he saved the land of Hyrule from darkness, he saved the land of Termania from a falling moon, he defeated the demonic mass of chaos, and overall, he's conquered so many dungeons, it makes Indiana Jones seem jealous. Along with all those feats, this kid can do so much more. He knows how to wield weapons very well. Everything from swords, to boomerangs, to arrows, to slingshots, to deku sticks, to deku nuts. And he has masks, which give him even more tremendous ability. From super speed to uncanny explosions, he can turn into a deku shrub, a goron, a zoro, and a god, fierce deity. This kid is pretty cool. Despite the fact that he's also great with weapons, he is also very smart. This kid knows how to ride horses is very fluently. He can play several instruments extremely well, from ocarinas to guitars to bongos to flutes. And the fact that he can take on any puzzle or dungeon, no matter how difficult, and succeed by figuring out how to solve them, which is pretty amazing for a kid to solve puzzles about switching between realms of time. Also, come on, you gotta give to the kid. Every time he finds a weapon or an item inside a dungeon, he uses it to the very max. And he's also taking down huge monsters. As stated before, he took down Ganon and Majora, he's also taking down giant dongos and giant flying fire dragons. Yeah, we don't know much about Young Link, he doesn't really talk, he's a blank slate, but his feats, his accomplishments, his actual weapons and arsenal are pretty amazing for a kid, and that's why he's on this list.
Jack and Daxter from the Jack series. Now, Jack and Daxter themselves are pretty opposites when you put them together. Jack is one of your protagonists with spiky hair, never really talks, does what's right, and gets the job done. Daxter, however, is the complete opposite. He is loudmouth, he is self-centered, he is obnoxious, a smartass, and doesn't know when to shut the hell up, and he'll normally never do things without getting a little bit something from return. Normally, these two characters would probably clash, but somehow it works when they both get together, mostly because it seems like Jack and Daxter have some sort of friendship way past from what we've seen in the game. Along with their amazing friendship and personality, these guys have some amazing abilities, along with your basic long jump, double jump, high jump, spin attack, and overall able to run for some long distance. Jack can harness Eco because when he gets green Eco, he heals. When he gets blue Eco, he goes fast. When he gets red Eco, he becomes stronger. And when he gets yellow Eco, he kind of has a projectile. Also, he has white Eco to do an ultimate breaking precursor object blast, which is kind of a finishing move, which looks pretty cool. With the power to control Eco and their acrobatics, they have accomplished one of the biggest feats in their world, basically. What they did was they stopped two Dark Eco Sages from basically plummeting the world in Dark Eco, which is basically like anti-life. Also, once you think about it, they're pretty handy. They may not be the best at everything, but these guys know how to ride, ride hover bikes, hover boats. They know how to fish. They can tame some cows. They save the bird that they use later to ride around boggy waters. And come on, if you're going to a cave full of spiders and not get scared, you're pretty rock solid right there. They've traveled through huge ice mountains, through burning fire tunnels. They went underwater to Atlantis, basically. They went to forbidden jungles and to misty islands. And yet, it seems like it was just every day's work. Also, they have some personality if I haven't mentioned it enough. Every time they get a precursor item, they just gotta do an amazing dance, cause come on, even though they're right there to save the world, you gotta have fun every once in a while. And that's why they're on this list. And sure, Jack may be so quiet he gets kind of boring and Daxter is so loud mouth he gets too annoying to even play the game. But come on, these two are good friends. They know how to do so many things. They've saved their land. They deserve a spot on your list. And come on, look at that dance. It's just so amazing. Splatoon Inkling from Splatoon. Now there really isn't much I can say about these characters, mostly because I've not played the game as much, and from what I've seen, the single player doesn't really give the characters much of a personality other than them just being cool kids, but they're pretty cool. Their game looks pretty amazing. The whole idea of shooting ink and covering your turf instead of just shooting another opponent just to kill them is pretty refreshing once you think about it. And the fact that these characters are customizable, you can make them look as cool or as nerdy or as stupid as you want them to be. Sure, there isn't really major customization with them, but they're kids, but now they're squids. Despite the fact that they're also kids, but they're squids, they have a huge variety of weapons. From your standard blasters and your sniper rifles, to huge splatter bombs and weird ink tornadoes, to the more unorthodox splatter rollers and paintbrushes. It's just pretty amazing. It's just pretty amazing the fact that it's all ink based. And not only that, they have some amazing abilities. Like I said before, they can turn to a kid and squid. The fact that they can turn to a squid, they can traverse in their own ink color. They can swim around basically in stealth mode at this point. They can climb up walls, go through grates, basically anything because they're an ink squid. And when they turn to a kid, they can use the huge variety of weapons I mentioned earlier. And come on, if you have a choice between a kid or a squid, you're going to be a squid. If not a kid, but probably a squid. If not a kid. I know the whole reason I put the Splatoon Inklings on this list was for the meme, but they're cool kids nonetheless. With a huge variety of weapons, their abilities, and the fact that they're just cool. And they're squids and kids. And that's about it. Sora from the Kingdom Hearts series. Now this kid is pretty amazing. For starters, his weapon of choice, a Keyblade. Now I don't know how many kids would go out there fighting Heartless, Nobodies, Inverses, and Dream Eaters with a weapon that looks like a key, but this kid gets it. This kid uses the Keyblade to its absolute max, using its amazing combat ability to do amazing combos. This kid can use magic, because the Keyblade has that. He can use the basic Fire, Thunder, and Blizzard spells, but he can also use the more advanced Stop, Reflecta, and Arrow spells. Which is pretty cool because you know magic who wouldn't want to use magic for fighting along with his amazing combat experience that he learned 
not once, but twice, because he forgot how to use the Keyblade once, and we learned it all by himself with no training whatsoever. Aside from all that amazing Keyblade abilities and all that, when he got a little old, he got a new uniform which lets him use dry forms. What these forms allow him to do is just amplify either his magic, his attack, both, or unite him with his nobody to create one ultimate form. Or, if everything goes bad, he kind of goes into a shadow anti-form, which is pretty cool, but extremely dangerous to use in combat. Aside from all of his magic abilities, all of his combat abilities, and all of his drive abilities, this kid has done some of the most unbelievable things ever in the Kingdom Hearts universe. He has taken down huge nobodies and heartlesses, he has taken down Organization 13, he has taken down Xemnas, Ansem, and almost Xehanort a couple times. Not to mention the fact that he also took on Sethroth. If you could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Sethroth, you're pretty amazing. And atop of all of that, this kid is just so cool and nice to hang around with. This kid has a personality that's just so sunny and vibrant. No matter how dark things get, no matter how sad it turns out, this kid will just have a smile on his face and a goofy disposition to go along with it, which is pretty unique and pretty fun for a kid to have. And yeah, even though Sora is kind of dumb at times and a little bit too goofy when things need to be serious, he is still just a fun kid to be around and he's just so skilled at what he does. Sure, he has no training and sure, he can be a little bit more serious and maybe a little bit less childish, but what are you going to do? He's a child. He's on a list about top kids. Then again, even though he may be just a kid, he is pretty much connected to a bunch of people's hearts and he does look amazing, doing some of the most spectacular quick time events I've seen in video games and that's why he's on this list in the first place. And yeah, I know Sora goes up from Kingdom Hearts 1 to Kingdom Hearts 2 and most of his cinematics and flashiness comes from Kingdom Hearts 2, but my list is about the top 10 kids in gaming and one of my rules was 18 years or younger. And Sora is under 18 so you gotta let him on the list. And plus look at his cinematics. They're so flashy they make Dante and Kratos seem a little jealous with their amazing cinematics. And come on, he's underneath 18. Let him be on the list. Don't hate Did you enjoy that video? I hope you did because it took a long time to put that video together. It took me so much time and that was like the most effort I ever put into a video. It's crazy. But if you like that, might as well like, favorite, subscribe, follow me on Twitter and Facebook. And if you like, give me a suggestion on something else because I have no ideas for topics. I mean, it kind of shows the fact that I already did like four, three Smash videos in a row. Yeah, I'm... yeah. if you guys have any other topics, you can tell me. That being said, I'm the Metro Trainer. Thank you for watching. See you next time, and let's see if I do something else later on. Probably will, but not for like another week or so. I'm tired. Later.